and welcome to my review of the Explore Scientific 5 inch Apo Refractor. Um, not so much maybe a review but at least my thoughts and feelings and experience that I've had with it. I've worn the telescope for um, 11 months now and so I've had lots of opportunity to give it a test um, observing and imaging through it. I did buy this telescope for imaging um, so usually I have it set up with a side by side with an 80mm um, short tube refractor which I use with an auto guider um, and I image using um, a Canon 60DA digital SLR. Um, it's mounted on an NEQ6 mount and um, that is very much an adequate mount for this size of telescope. Um, I think really this is um, ideally suited. It's a good heavy strong mount um, which you, you do need with a telescope of that size. You can see it's it ain't no small wee telescope. So let's have a look at the um, telescope. We'll start from the top and work our way downwards. So we have a, um, a dew shield here which slides backwards and forwards. Um, so you slide it backwards to store in the case and you get once it's slid backwards you get this metal um, cover that you use to protect the lens that's a really nice safe way to store your telescope here is the lens itself this is um, a 5 inch triplet so that is three lenses which are used to bring the red green and blue parts of the um, spectrum to, uh, to the exact same focus um, which then means that what this type of telescope is hoping to achieve is that you do not get any false colour when you look or take photographs through the telescope. Um, this telescope um, it is really well baffled you can just about see a couple of the baffles there so that's those dark rings you can see inside that's to um, prevent any stray light from moving around inside of the telescope it seems to be really well baffled knife edge baffling with this type of lens um, color free false color free that the free or false color that is what does that mean well I use a digital SLR so I do get this tiny very small amount of colour fringing around really bright stars it's something that I live with it's fine um, and you can adjust that in Photoshop I'll put some photographs that I've taken with this telescope on my digital SLR I'll, put, I'll post a couple of those at the end of the video if you're using a CCD camera um, it would be then monochrome images that you're taking so there would be um, you would be using a red, green and blue filter um, and then combining those to make a colour image. There would be a very slight amount of refocus needed between the blue and the red filter. So I would suggest just in the you know a, the few tens or um, a few hundreds of microns maybe. But not a lot. So it's virtually free of false colour this telescope. It's got carbon fibre tube. So it's lightweight, strong, it's thermally, thermally stable. It's absolutely beautiful looking tube, has a really nice feel to it, I love the tube. Very much recommend the carbon fibre version of it. When I bought this um, telescope, the tube rings it came with were um, with this really nice feature of a handle on the top. It came with a Vixen dovetail bar which I have changed to a Losmondi, but that's because of my imaging setup. It has these tube clips on the rings. Usually what you would have is a thumb screw arrangement. Um, this came with these clips. These are really, really horrible. I'm just going to tell you as it is, I found them to be really awful. So when I first got the telescope, these way clips here, um, you would put the telescope in the tube and point it upwards. That's where telescopes are usually pointed. And these clips weren't keeping the um, telescope in place or very slowly over a period of a few minutes the tube would just slip backwards until the back of the dew shield here bumped against the tube ring so to fix that problem I had to put some electrician's tape around the edge of this uh, small wee clip here which just nips those tube rings together just very slightly more 
and enables them to give a good tight grip around the tube so it's no longer slipping backwards however this design for tube rings I'll just tell you now it is absolutely awful it is not safe for your equipment the first thing that anybody must do and I haven't yet and I have used them for 11 months the first thing you must do is get rid of the, get rid of these tube rings um, to adjust the balance of your telescope so you've got your camera on and you're out in the dark in a field somewhere and you need this telescope tube to balance without um, you know, so you can position it anywhere and it stays in the same place to do that you have to have your camera on get your camera focused and slide the tube backwards and for backwards or forwards to achieve that balance when you slide the tube backwards and forwards with this system you have to unlo you have to let loose both clips I'm not going to do that now because a little disaster will happen but you have to kind of uh, be very careful around what you're doing um, it's just in all honesty not satisfactory and it is not safe these clips are just no good whatsoever and are the weakest point of this system by far and you need not to continue using them the first thing I'm going to do very soon is replace those tube rings I do not like those clips I can just think I can just imagine it being really easy for your telescope and your camera to actually just fall out of that tube cradle with that ring system as it is it's just not good considering how much you pay for this telescope and how much you might pay for a camera it's too much to lose and um, the version that I bought it came without a finder scope which was good um, I purchased this tele this finder scope um, stem from eBay it was about 50 US dollars or so I got the tall one you can get one that's half the height of that the reason I got the tall one was so that it would um, reach over the top comfortably of any paraphernalia that you have on mounted on the tube rings um, it's a little bit harder to balance with it sticking out so far from the tube however I find it to be really good um, I was able to then put in a 50mm finder scope that I already had so the benefits of this of, of it not having a finder scope with it were that I got to put my favourite finder scope on my new favourite telescope onto the focuser so before I bought this scope um, I read a lot of reviews and the focuser did um, in a number of those reviews come out as the weakest part of the system um, yeah it's got a couple of pretty minor issues really but in comparison to those really awful tube ring clips the focus is ok um, let's go through it and have a look so it's got a thumb screw here and that is to allow you to rotate your camera or eyepiece or whatever is fastened onto your focuser by 360 degrees I found that to be an absolute dream it's been great to have that you can frame up your pictures, your photographs, um, no problems with that. Um, there's been no image shift um, or anything when I've used that to rotate. It's been good. It does have some grub screws on there so you could collimate it if needed. However, from the box I didn't need to. The focuser, um, it's got your standard focus knobs on there. Also has your 10 to 1 fine focuser on here so every 10 turns of this focus equals one turn of the large focus knob so that just allows you to very finely reach focus it works quite well when it's not under a lot of tension um, it comes with a star diagonal which is carbon fiber on the sides to match the tube so that's pretty cool it's a two inch star diagonal and it comes with a one and a quarter inch um, adapter these two tube extensions came with the telescope when I bought it. The reason that they're on is that um, at about the focus has got about um, 40 mils of focus travel. Um, you need these two tube rings to reach focus with a digital camera. So um, I've left those fitted for the purpose of um, this video. However, with a camera, 
the focuser is perhaps a little I found a couple of issues perhaps a little bit less than ideal but not much there hasn't been as big an issue as I thought um, firstly is that when you've got a camera on you need to tension to keep that camera in place you do need to fasten down these tension screws a wee bit however when you do that it was putting a certain amount of pressure on this part of the focuser and when I was moving the focuser backwards it would actually um, from this angle it would actually lift so my camera would be at, fork at, at, at the other end of the focuser tube there I would move the tube backwards and it would lift up and steer lift it until it moved further backwards to amend that and so the image the image would shift um, and to amend that I would then move the focuser forwards back in to reach focus and the focuser would shift back down so there was a bit of um, there was a bit of play in the focuser if you like um, that's not for me at least that's not really an issue for you it might be um, however there are some adjustment screws on the top there are four adjustment screws um, I adjusted these two screws here to um, the, the, the scope was basically under tension lifting up so if you look at where the Crayford focuser is the tension screws and those those two grub screws there you could I could see that that was where the adjustment was needed because the focuser was then lifting upwards so I tightened those down by really small amounts until when it was under tension I moved the focuser backwards and that it did not lift and it, it currently doesn't um, um, I think that's probably resolved that problem to be honest with you um, the only thing that I haven't checked for is that after moving those wee grub screws whether it affected the collimation of the telescope um, however um, when I was making those adjustments I didn't see it make moving the focus tube at all it's more something those those wee grub screws there only seem to come into play those, those ones there only seem to come into play when you've got these tension screws fastened down quite under a lot of tension to keep a camera in place so for um, eyepieces and for digital SLRs this focuser is probably adequate it probably does the job for heavy CCD cameras it will not do the job you probably would need to upgrade to perhaps the Moonlight 3 inch focuser which would be $450 um, as things stand I'm actually quite happy to continue with this focuser maybe if I feel in the future my needs change or something or my camera changes I might upgrade but as it stands for observation and for DSLR imaging that focus is fine um, regarding the false colour that you might get through um, almost any refractor when imaging with a DSLR because it's image imaging in one in one shot colour um, yeah you do get a little bit of blue fringing around the moon and bright and very very bright stars however you can adjust the um, you can adjust that slight blue fringing that you get in Photoshop so I have not really found it a problem um, so overall I think this telescope for its money is absolutely awesome I'm just I, I can tell you now I'm just not going to change it I think it's amazing I love it however the tube rings are a different kettle of fish altogether they are not adequate for the scope and I, if, if um, anyone from Explore Scientific watches this I would say get those changed so yeah overall I would recommend this scope absolutely great value for money got no hesitation in recommending it to you whatsoever bargain and I love it